Thank you very much. It's a pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> Hi, Alex. You hungry? Forget it, Tara. I already bought one of your stupid Save the Manatee candy bars. But Alex is an endangered species. Come on, please. Everyone else is broke. Not everyone. Why don't you ask him? Travis Horton? That two-bit con artist? Hey, Kevin, I bet you a dollar you can't break an egg like this in the palm of your hand. You're on, chump. <laughs> Pay up, sucker. Everybody knows you can't break an egg like that. My milk money. Ah-ha. <laughs> uh, hi, Travis. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Would you like to buy a candy bar to help save the manatee? No, but I'll bet you this money against all your stupid candy bars you can't break an egg in the palm of your hand. Wager accepted. Tara, what are you doing? <laughs> it's for a good cause. You won't regret it. What do you mean? I already regret it. Money. Hey, ever heard the expression, money makes the world go round? I believe it's love makes the world go round. No, I think it's love of money makes the world go round. It's gravity that makes the world go round. And love and money do not mix, trust me. Oh, Merv's still pining away for Pamela. <laughs> Merv, I think you better face it. That fish got away. Thanks to you guys. Hey, we held up our part of the bargain. Yeah, which reminds me, how's my 10-page essay coming, Merv? Remember to double space, dude. Yeah, yeah. And remember to spell his name wrong so the teacher doesn't suspect anything. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. Man, how'd I get myself into another one of these situations? I mean, what was I supposed to do? Oh, no, this is terrible. What's the matter, Merv? You make Hawthorne's least wanted list? <laughs> no worse. I've got a date. What? No way. You guys gotta help me. Your date is the one who needs help. <laughs> her name is Pamela Fairchild. She goes to Newberry Prep. Here's her picture. Hey, she's cute. How'd you get a date with her? You guys don't understand. We've never met. That explains it. We've been talking to each other for two months now on the school computer network. Hi, guys, what's up? Merv has a blind date. Cool. She can't see him, Merv. You got a chance. Idiot. Walter, a blind date means we've never met. And there's a problem. Since she goes to that Richie school, I kind of told her I have more money than I really do. Uh, how much more money, Merv? You are now looking at the proud owner of the entire state of Texas. I can't believe it. Merv, are you nuts? But the worst part is she wants to meet me tonight. Doesn't look good, dude. Well, there's still time to buy Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're right, Merv. What a joke. You acting like a big shot. <laughs> Wait a second. That's it. I've got an idea. Tara, aren't your parents going on that whale watch tonight? Well, yeah, Now, but... I'm going to need to use your house. And here's what I want you guys to be. Courteous, kind, attentive, and forthright. Do I make myself clear? Merv, you better plan on doing our homework for a month, not a week. Yes, yes, fine. Oh my gosh, that's her. Now remember, no matter what, I'm your rich boss. Uh, you get the door. But I'm the cook. Oh yeah, uh, you get the door. How do you do? Pamela Fairchild to see Master Mervyn. I'll announce it to His Highness. <laughs> Miss Pamela Fairchild to see Master Mervyn. Mervyn, how nice to finally meet you. Likewise, I'm sure. Uh, your coat? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Kevin, do you think you can manage to put the young lady's coat somewhere? <laughs> I can think of a few places to put it. And don't drag it on the floor, you lout. <laughs> well... Mervyn, I, I really must... <clears throat> I really must say that for someone who owns the state of Texas, I thought you'd live in a bigger house. Well, 
this isn't the family house. Oh, no. This is my house. Daddy gave us all our own houses so that we would have enough space to grow. How wonderful. Yeah, boy, I mean, you're talking rich. Uh, how about some hors d'oeuvres? That would be lovely. I hope you care for cocktail weenies. Oh. Oh. So much for the weenies. Good help is so hard to find. You idiot! How dare you! You shall have a 10% pay reduction as of tonight. I should throw you bodily from the premises and unleash the dogs. The rest of you don't. Chop, chop, help clean this up. <clears throat> Mervyn, darling, you're probably wondering why I wanted to speak to you in person tonight. Actually, I imagine you found my charm and vast wealth irresistible. I feel we've become very close over the past few weeks. Yes? In fact, there may have been the beginnings of a romance blooming between us. May have been? And that's why I have to nip it in the bud. What? I think you should know I don't date rich guys. They're way too snobby. You what? <laughs> You're kidding. I do not kid. It has been my experience. The guys who earn what they have are much nicer. Pamela, am I glad to hear you say that? Because I'm not rich. <laughs> yeah, right. Kids your age always own their own houses and have servants. No, I was kidding before. I'm really poor, honest. I don't even have my own bedroom. These aren't my servants, they're my friends. Here, I'll show you. Alex, tell them who you are. I am your stupid maid, Master Mervyn. No, you're not. I'm just kidding. Tara, tell her you're not my maid. I finished cleaning your room, sir. Perhaps you'd like a cup of hot cocoa. You guys. Go on, Walter. Tell her you're not my servant. I will speak for Walter, so he doesn't make it a salary cut anymore. We've both been in your employ, sir, for well over three years now. No, they haven't. They're lying. Really, I swear, I'm not rich. Honest. Come on. Don't lie about your wealth, Mervyn. It's pathetic. Master Mervyn, dinner is served. Oh, forget it. I'm not hungry. But we've prepared his master's favorite dish. <clears throat> First, some of Walter's English lit appetizer, followed by Alex's math under glass. Next, my geography salad with French class dressing. <laughs> Enjoy. to you freshmen a fire drill does not mean school is being let out early please follow the instructions of your teachers in an orderly fashion that is all thank you freshmen why can't they just send them all to a desert island then they'd be free free to be me. <laughs> yeah, I'd knock them dead. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Nice to be here. Well, let's get things rolling. Hey, how did the freshman get all those holes in his forehead? Learning to eat with a fork. <laughs> Speaking of eating, why did the freshman eat his math quiz? Somebody told him it was a piece of cake. Ooh, did you hear about the freshman who walked into the doctor's office with a pig under his arm? Doctor said, that is the ugliest creature I've ever seen. The pig said, I know. <laughs> the pig said, <laughs> hey, what's this? A freshman with his foot stapled to the floor. <laughs> hey, really, I love the freshman, though. I said to a freshman the other day, hey, don't ever change. I didn't mean his underwear. <laughs> Good smell. Great source of natural gas, though. Have you seen the movie they made about a freshman who ate nothing but burritos? Gone with the wind. <laughs> yeah, but well, hey, you gotta hand it to these ninth graders. They stick together. You know why? Because snot is a great adhesive. <laughs> oh, yeah. And get this. I just heard they named a street after the freshman class. It's called Dead End. <laughs> Thanks. You've been great, but I gotta run. Bye now. The truth-seeking camera of the Murview Mentory, stalking the halls of Hawthorne. Ever vigilant, ever watchful, who will fall prey to the piercing lens of the Murview Mentory? Today's episode, To Catch a Thief. Here at Hawthorne, freshman students work to raise money for the school. How is it done? Usually by selling something, a raffle ticket, a button, or even a candy bar. 
Today they're raising money to help make Hawthorne more beautiful. Candy bars! Get your candy bars here and help fund the freshman fountain. Only a dollar. The freshman fountain. What a worthy cause. Excuse me, sir. I'll take one. Well, I seem to be missing a few. Walter, you pig! You ate all my candy bars! Sorry, dude! And give me that dollar! The day has finally arrived for the unveiling of the freshman fountain. This gift to the school is made possible by the fundraising efforts of everyone in the ninth grade class. And now I'm proud to give you Diogenes, Seeker of Honest Men. Oh my goodness! This is all we could afford? Instead of a beautiful statue, here stands a slouching, flabby freshman with a watering can. Hey! Oh, the shame. Where has all the money gone? What about the candy bar proceeds? Who would have the audacity to steal money from the freshman treasury? Call it a hunch, but this reporter's gut tells him it can only be one man. Vice Principal Lit. <laughs> if you want to catch a mouse, take away his cheese. If you want to catch a rat, take away his briefcase. Look how closely he guards it. No doubt brimming with stolen cash. And now it's time to steal it back. <laughs> Stupid freshman, always up to something. And now, the moment of truth. Let's find out just how much old Lippy is gouging the freshman class for. Aha! The plain brown wrapper. Perfect for concealing large amounts of unmarked bills. Whoa, look at all this! Murder! Walter! Quick, stash it! <laughs> there it is, my briefcase. Looking for something, Mr. Littman? A large sum of cash, perhaps? Murph, you know exactly what I'm looking for. Now give me my sandwich. Sandwich? Is that what we're calling it these days? Whatever happened to bread, dough, lunch, hey, Lester? Yes. What did happen to it, Merv? Mr. Littman, I hate to do this, but... I thought so! You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You know... Uh... Would you like something to drink with that, sir? I think this calls for more than the usual discipline. And so the injustice continues. But the more we will will endeavor to flush out lawbreakers, mop up scandals, clean, disinfect, and deodorize Hawkins. Kerr, will you shut up and hand me the plunger? This is murder. Signing off. Stick around for more welcome freshmen. It's good for the earth. No, not really. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Welcome Freshmen will return in a moment. And now back to Welcome Freshmen. So you thought you could forge my secretary's signature, huh? Well, Miss Petruca and I have ways of dealing with your kind, mister. How about a healthy dose of standing in the corner? About 10 hours worth? Let's go. Your name? John Dewall. Ever wish you had the power and prestige of a high school administrator? Waiting for the day when you could teach kids a lesson they'll never forget? Well, now the wait is over because now there's the new vice principal impersonator kid from Really Good Industries. Yes, everything you need to look, act, and talk like a real high school administrator. The amazing new vice principal impersonator kit comes complete with this shiny cue ball wig, realistic hear everything ears, and a PTA certified name taker clipboard. Order yours now and you'll also receive this free booklet of great authority figure catchphrases, guaranteed to take the wind out of anyone's sails. Where were you in the bad up brain buster? Your name? Forgot? What do you mean you forgot? You'd forget your own head if it weren't screwed onto your shoulders. Name? I'm afraid we can't condone that kind of behavior here. You're in hot water, mister. Let's have your name. Hey, you. Do we have a discipline problem here? I certainly hope not. Your name, please. I'm going to say this again. Do you want this to go on your permanent record? What is your name? Only for people like you, Buster. That's what you call the zoo. Petruca, you can wax my big round chrome dome any day. <laughs> wax my big round chrome dome, huh? You've got some explaining to do, smart boy. <laughs> do you know the penalty for impersonating an administrator of this school? You are about to find out. So get tough and start handing out demerits like a pro. Order now. The new vice principal impersonator kit will win you the respect you deserve. Today. <laughs> Oh, 
what's going on here? Haven't you heard? Today is the day they put the new cash machine in. A cash machine here at Hawthorne? You mean all these people have bank accounts here? Why not? First, Hawthorne has the best interest rates in town. Pretty convenient, huh? Some convenient? Look at this line. Yeah, I wonder what's wrong. Hey, come on, man. Pilot error. <laughs> hey, go ahead. You gotta put money in before you can take it out. Well, yeah, that's the problem. I just put my money in. And then I realized, I might get hungry later. Might get hungry? Yeah, but now a stupid machine won't give me my money back. Look. Welcome to the first Hawthorne Bank automated teller. Please insert your deposit. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't want to put money in. I want to take money out. First Hawthorne is accepting deposits only at this time. Insert your deposit now. Stupid machine. Do not tamper with the automated teller. Violators will be prosecuted. Please insert your deposit now. Would you hurry up? Come on, Walter. Deal with it later. You're going to be late for class. Yeah, just a minute. Give me my money! Please insert your... Thank you, y'all. It's over. Please try us again. First Hawthorne Bank. I can't believe you fell for that one, Walter. Huh? On second thought. <laughs> that Travis Horton, he's gonna grow up to be a crook. Yeah, like a counterfeiter. Or a safe cracker. Or a politician. Why not a pirate? What? what? A pirate, you ninnies. Oh, here's trouble. Okay, Mr. H, tell us what's on your mind. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Back in the 18th century, being a pirate was a smart career choice. You can make out like a bandit. That's why when ex-pirate Captain Kidd retired, he was the perfect person to teach economics to the freshmen of the time. Although his students often complained about his anchovy breath. Anchovy breath? Arrgh! I'll tell you to the yard, arm, and let the crows at you. Arrgh! All right, class. Today I'm gonna learn you the economics of being a pirate. How to man your pirate ship. How to get your booty. And what to do with it once you got it. Any questions? Mm, yeah. What's the parrot's name? Can the parrot talk? Did the parrot come with the suit? <laughs> Another one of the dead blasted parrots. I'll ask the questions around here. Murph, you just discovered your mate's been robbing your treasure. What are you gonna do with him, lad? Well, first I gave him a reprimand, followed by a probation period, and if that didn't work, I'd ask for his resignation. <laughs> no, you needle-neck, lily-livered barnacle butt. You keel-haul him and make him walk the plank. Hey. Potty mouth, potty mouth. Shut up, you stinking green buzzard. Kevin, you're coming to port in the Ivory Coast, where the ivory's yours for the taking. What's the first thing you do when you get there? Contact the Chamber of Commerce? No, you sweaty sea dog. Tara. Find out if the ivory came from endangered elephants? You loot and pillage. What kind of pirates are you, you cravenly codfish suckers? Brad! I know you are, but what am I? Brad! <laughs> no word out of you, you flying pack rat, and you'll be shark bait. Uh, Alex, you finally got your booty. All the ivory, gold, the brooms and gems you can stuff into a treasure chest. What are you gonna do with it? Well, I'd have it all appraised, cash it in, and invest in a portfolio of high-yield stocks to protect against rising interest rates. <laughs> no! No! Shiver me, Timbers! You bury it in the ground! How am I gonna earn any interest with that? You bury it so that none of the other sticky-fingered, scurvy tail pirates can get their grubby paws on it. <laughs> Thanks one of that one! Thanks one of that one! What was that, Parrot? <laughs> Never mind! Never mind! <laughs> oh, sassin', sassin', sassin'. I hate wastebaskets. Walter, when you're dividing up the gold... Wait a minute. I thought you were supposed to be manning the wheel. I got bored. Walter, you're not up there to have fun. You're there to steer the ship. Why, I'll have you run up the mast. I'll have you taken apart. And ho! <laughs> oh, criminy. ship went down that day, and with it, the famed pirate's fortune. Serve you right! Serve you right! I thought I told you to shut up. But at least kids' kids learned something in that fateful trip. The value of swimming lessons. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, Kevin. Did you hear about that new kid who transferred from Pillowig Prep School? Who cares? What's a rich kid got that we don't have? Are you kidding? I hear rich kids have their own personal trainers instead of gym class. And they have two pools instead of one. One for swimming and one for skateboarding. And they come to school in big stretch limos. Walter, come back to Earth, man. A kid who has money definitely doesn't go around flaunting it. It's not cool. Announcing Matthew Morton, the Hollyhock the third. <laughs> Whoa! Excuse me, could you tell me which of these lockers is mine? I, I might take a wild guess. <laughs> oh, thank you, my good man. Hey, you must be the rich, I mean, the new kid. It's Morton Hollyhock the third. Hi, I'm Kevin the first. And this is Walter the Zero. Charm. <laughs> oh, could you tell me, what is the dining hall serving this après-midi? Dining hall? Yeah. Well, they got cheese dogs in the cafeteria. What? <laughs> and I was so in the mood for pheasants. I suppose I'll just have to brown van it today. Uh, don't you mean brown bag it? No. No, brown van. As in my caterer's van, which is brown. <laughs> <laughs> I really think we ought to get to know each other better. Yeah, and I was thinking maybe I could show you around uh, the school. Would you like to make a donation for the Save the Giant Burmese Tortoise Fund? Sorry, Tara. Morton will be having his midday repast with us. Yeah, and then we're going to go eat lunch. Here you go, young lady. It sounds like a worthy cause. Wow, 20. Uh, hi, hey, my name's you Tara. Morton? I'm Merv. How would you like to invest in my new invention, the solar can opener? Hey, kid, pick a card. I'll bet your doll I can tell you what it is. What? <laughs> Did I mention the flight of the strike? Oh. Tibetan tiger? Oh, stop it! Stop it! Oh, if only you knew how isolated I feel among you. I make instant friends wherever I go, but they're attracted by my wealth. Not the real me. Oh, the pain. The pain. Quick, a handkerchief for Morton. Yeah, 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 yeah get him a handkerchief. Morton. Here, use my sleeve. It's what I use. <laughs> it's a geek. Alex, this is Morton. He's wonderfully sensitive. Well, he's making a puddle in front of my locker. I can't believe they let losers like this into Hawthorne. Alex, where are your manners? <laughs> You'll have to forgive her. She was raised by wolves. Geek? <laughs> Alex, what a beautiful name. Yuck, don't make me barf. <laughs> she doesn't like me. She doesn't like me. How refreshing. A ray of sunshine. Oh, perhaps I could carry your books. All right, but stop your blubbering and walk at least three feet behind me. <laughs> hey, you stop girl, your don't you get behind me? You walk at least three feet. Get your loser, puddle maker. Well, it just goes to show you, rich kids are people too. Everybody's people, Walter. You're self-excluded, of course. <laughs> hey, what if out of all of us, Walter becomes a wealthy tycoon? <laughs> I can just see it. Hurricane Walter. <laughs> a tycoon, silly, not typhoon. A tycoon is a really rich guy. Oh, hey, that'd be cool. Me, a really rich guy. So what would you do with all your money, rich guy? Well, first I'd buy my parents a big new house. Really? That's thoughtful of you, Walter. I'm surprised you wouldn't blow it on something frivolous. No way. You see, once I get my parents out of the house, I throw like this humongous party <laughs> with the biggest bowls of chips and dip and cheese and crackers. We'd have punch bowls you could swim in, and huge pizzas, and baby lamb chops that stick to your fingers, and candy. Oh, so the candy would go on for days. And then, we'd have dinner. Be today, a country singer, an astronaut, a swami. We'll find out when Clarissa explains it all tonight at six o'clock, five central, right here on Nick. Hi, this is Kirk Fogg. Stay tuned for Legends of a Hidden Temple next on Nick.
Malcolm Freshman was produced at Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios, Florida.